Last time we set sail from Marina Key for Gorda Sound with our brand new Doyle cruising sails. After an adjustment or two, we had a good sail to Gorda Sound. We dropped anchor on the south side of Prickly Pear Island, only to be hit with high winds and rain moments later. We moved to a mooring ball to be closer to the Bitter and Yacht Club. I took advantage of the rain and cleaned all the stainless steel. This is our third rain squall today. Going ashore in between weather systems is not fun. We moved to the dock for easy access to the beach and restaurants at the Bitter and Yacht Club. The weather got better so we could go out and explore. We toured Briris Creek looking for iguanas. We didn't find any. When the sun came out, we spent the morning on the beach swimming and relaxing, which was lovely. We took the dinghy to Leverick Bay and did some shopping at Arawak, which is a really cute shop. We took a self-directed tour of the Marina Loss, which are right on the water, nicely appointed and have a warm and welcoming ambiance. This is a great place to slow down for a week or two. With the calm weather, we took the dinghy to Oil Nut Bay and looked around. Oh, hello. <laughs> All this and more on SV Cabo. Our time at the dock is coming to an end, so it is time to put the dinghy away and get Cabo ready for departure. You want me to do something, honey? Pardon me? You want me to do something? No, too big. I'm attaching the David line to the back of the boat and attaching the line to the front of the boat. Getting off the dinghy without falling in is important. First, I raise the bow with the stern after that. Now it's time to raise the stern. Something sounds off. I need to investigate, but of course I keep going when I should have stopped. The line is stuck as it came off the shiv and is now wedged between the shiv and the surrounding bracket. It's time to drop the dinghy and get the line sorted out. Oh, 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 I see. As I look at the hiccup I caused, I'm looking for an easy way to get the line free. That's smart. After a tug with the channel locks and getting the line back on the shiv, putting the dinghy away went as easy as it always does. It is morning and we are about to cast off. We have been here for six days and I'm taking one last walk ashore to say our goodbyes before we cast off. The Bitter and Yacht Club is an easy place to be to relax and explore. Come in for just one day or evening and leaving the next morning, as many charter guests do, is actually a shame. Until one slows down a bit to enjoy the islands, well, it just becomes another rush rush event, like when we're at home. We are under sail with Norman Island as our destination. 18 knots of uh, true wind speed, we got 6 knots of boat speed, we'll be changing course shortly to go to Norman Island. Our new sails. Mosquito Island in the background, Georgia putting away portions of the uh, helm enclosure. It is still early in the season and there are not many boats out today. It appears that the weather is getting much better and today looks to be a good day for sailing. We have 14 to 15 knots of true wind speed on the beam and are sailing at over six and a half knots. We have guests arriving in a couple of days. We will spend a couple of days at Norman Island to have a little fun in the sun and it is close to Roadtown where we will greet and pick up our guests. Seven knots, seven and a half speed over ground. We are now in open uh, Caribbean Sea. A little bit of a swell. 15 knots of true wind speed. This is nice sailing. 
We exited Gorda Sound and took a left turn to sail southwest past Virgin Gorda and the dogs. We made our way to the Sir Francis Drake Channel. After Salt Island, we exited the channel for open water and took Peter Island to our right. We took a right turn and traveled between Peter and Norman Island for a downwind leg and completed the trip at Norman Island. We are in open water east of Peter Island and are feeling the ocean swells. Off in the distance, you can see a commercial ship and it feels good to be in the open water sailing. East side of Peter Island. We are between Peter and Norman Island sailing downwind. Oh, you scared me. The wind speed is dropping, as is our corresponding boat speed. We are almost there, and it is time to put the sails away. We have furled the Genoa, and she is stowed away. We fired up the engines, turned in the wind, and lowered the mainsail. We made our way into the bay and secured Cabo on a mooring ball at Norman Island. We had a very nice and relaxing sail from the Bitter End Yacht Club. We traveled 24.4 nautical miles, averaging 5.3 knots from dock to the ball, with a top speed of 7.2 knots. Our travel time was 4 hours and 36 minutes. We are headed ashore to pay for our mooring ball and to spend some time on the beach. Of course, I will do a little snorkeling as well. Snorkeling is like swimming for exercise, but we have a view. We are entertained as we move through the water. A flounder making its way away from me. What kind of sea creature is this? Okay, how many times did the fish poop during the snorkeling event? It looks like they're coming by to check me out. It's a new day, and a rainy one. The rain has stopped and the wind has picked up. It's pretty windy, so I turned on the instruments to see how hard the wind was blowing. It's blowing over 22-23 knots. While it is not raining on us at the moment, it's pretty cool to see the rain coming down over there. The wind picked up and it is now blowing over 25 knots and is starting to rain again. Fortunately, the weather cleared up and we had another amazing day on the beach. This setting at Norman Island is what comes to mind when I think of being in the tropics. Sunny, calm, gentle waves lapping on the white sandy beach, turquoise waters everywhere, and a nice place to sit in the shade to take it all in. I wonder what Georgia is thinking. Maybe she is designing her next quilting pattern. No, she doesn't do quilting. Perhaps she's contemplating whether she will get a margarita or a painkiller. That's probably closer, but I may never know what's really going on over there. Maybe Georgie was thinking about going for a swim. Cleaning the mask in preparation for the swim. Georgia is patiently waiting for the warmth of the sun to inspire her to fully emerge herself in the water. The moment arrives. I am testing out George's new floaty. Historically, we have used the donut style floaties. We've been traveling with them for years. This is a new design, and it seems to be working pretty well. It is a hammock pool float with the ends sewn together to make a hammock chair. Hello. Hi, honey. We took a break from the beach, which is just 10 feet away, and had a lovely lunch at the bike.
Georgia and I were sitting in the shade enjoying the warm Caribbean day and this spectacular view. I thought I saw a turtle come up for a breath of air, so I thought I would snorkel out and see if I could find him. Or her. I don't actually know how to tell male and female turtles apart, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. I snorkel out in search for the turtle, and it takes me quite a while as I slowly move around in the general direction. Finally, there he is, enjoying a meal of seagrass. I move forward slowly as I don't want to disturb or startle him. At one point he looked up at me to check me out and he didn't seem to care that I was there. I dive down to get a closer look, but I just float back up. It's at this point that the beauty of all the colors on this creature become present. It is time for a breath of air. I feel very lucky that I get to see the wonders of our planet in a natural setting. Note the rudder slash fin control this turtle demonstrates. Impressive. The day comes to a close and it was an amazing day. We had wind and rain, sun and fun in the water, lunch on the beach, and swimming with the turtle. George and I got to spend the entire day together sharing everything, including this lovely sunset. We are watching ourselves on YouTube having an adventure while we are on an adventure. We are on our way back to Roadtown Tortola from Norman Island. We spent two days at Norman Island and now we are motoring the short distance across the Sir Francis Drake Channel. Our guests will be arriving this afternoon and another adventure will commence. En route we have another vessel heading toward us. It is a pretty large supply ship. The closest point of approach or CPA on the chart plotter is 334 feet. I change course a little to the left to open the space between us and the distance grows to 500 feet. Visibility is excellent so that is a sufficient distance that feels safe and conservative. We are on the dock in Tortola and Ross got us set up in a very nice spot. Thank you Ross. The ferry is entering the bay and our guests are on board. They are texting us. We're inside. Well look outside. <laughs> they might be sitting in the center seat. That that's what be. that's what they mean. Look like they slowed down. <laughs> oh yeah, too funny. I think they slowed down so Jay and Julie could see it. <laughs> <laughs> see ya. Cool. See, see drinks ready. Laugh out loud. Come back next time as we receive our guests, do a little provisioning, and get underway for a new adventure as we make our way to Norman Island. We have another turtle encounter and all this and more. We would like to invite you to subscribe, like, and leave a comment or question. Thanks for watching.